Hello, and welcome to a video in which I'm going to discuss, demonstrate printing, bouncing of an ADM file from Pro Tools using the internal Dolby Atmos render. This video is primarily for students at Huston University in the immersive audio course. So you want to record your mix and creating an ADM file is the way to do it. Uh, using the internal render, it's very simple. First thing you want to do is vis visit setup session, session setup window, and confirm that your timecode rate is set to 24 frames per second. That is the default frame rate for Dolby Atmos. Uh, Dolby may, Atmos probably supports different frame rates. I'm not exactly sure on that, but 24 is definitely the default. So double check that. When you're, uh, with that done, you're going to want to select the length of time in the edit window that you want to bounce. Uh, the way to do this is probably select the stereo reference file if that exists. Uh, the record labels mandate that any Atmos ADM you deliver is starts and ends at the exact same place that the stereo mix starts and ends. So they can sync them together and users can switch between them without time hiccups when they're listening. So that's important. Uh, in this particular situation, I'm actually not going to select the entire length. I want to keep this bounce very short so the video is very short so I'm just going to select a little bit of this reference track. With that ready to go, it's pretty simple. I'm going to go file, bounce mix, bounce mix, I don't know why I'm having a problem saying that, and which is command option B. And I'm going to double check that command option B. Yep, that's it. And uh, name it what you need want to name it. Um, Students, please use a cogent naming system. If you're going to submit this file, uh, please name it as we name most of our files here at NASCOM. Uh, now, selecting the file type, there's only one you want here. Uh, you want Wave Dolby Atmos. That's how you get to the ADM file. You're going to want to create a master file, Wave ADM, Broadcast Wave. You don't really need to mess with these. If you wanted to, you'd be going into the I.O. and changing the I.O. You've probably already done all that. You do not need to add a first frame of action, so leave that alone. You're not probably not creating any re-renders. That's for exporting groups and that sort of thing. Kind of cool if you need it. Um, and the rest is pretty simple and logical. You are going to have to select a place to put this ADM, uh, and that is up to you. I'm going to put this one just in the Bounced Files folder. And uh, you have offline or online. There should be no loss if you do offline. It'll be a little faster. And it should take a few minutes still. It's it's not super fast. And I'm going to hit bounce to disk here. And it's going to bounce my 19 second file here. And approximately two and a half times the rate of normal speed. And there should be an ADM file hiding in this folder. If I go look in my um, session folder that I'm working in here. And I look in Bounce Files. It's the one I just created here. This is the one I just made. So to confirm this and play this back, you can actually import ADMs back into Pro Tools. That's one, one way to play it. But I would like you to try using the external Dolby Atmos render, which you may not really need that often when you're using the internal render. So this is a good chance to check your file through that system. To do that, we're going to save and quit Pro Tools. Here in Nescom Control C, Pro Tools is using the HDX card and driver and feeding the matrix interface. We want the Dolby Atmos renderer to do the same thing, so we have to quit Pro Tools so the Atmos renderer can see the HDX card. Then open up the uh, Atmo Dolby Atmos renderer. You may need to open this up from your applications folder if you haven't drug it over here to the dock. And I'm going to open that up. And first thing I'm going to do, since this is this is assuming you may not have ever used the renderer on your own, is to go few, go through a few preferences here. So go to preferences, and the way I have them on the screen is the way they need to be here at Nescom. At least we're going to use the core audio driver. The input device is the Dolby Audio Bridge. We're not actually going to be using that today, but that is how Pro Tools, if we were going to be feeding the external renderer directly. That's how it would get the audio would get to the renderers through the audio bridge. Our output device is going to be the HDX card. You want your time code input, the LTC input at 129. That really doesn't matter for the moment, but again, if you were going to use Pro Tools with it, this would be um, how time code would get over. Uh, format is non-unchangeable here. We're going to use 24 frames per second and 48K. 
Uh, speaker and headphone delay we don't really care about at the moment, but I think the default is 22 milliseconds. So you can leave it there. We don't have any bass management. We don't have any um, uh, subwoofers per, per each main speaker, so leave that off. Headphone renderer mode. Uh, you've probably already been monitoring headphones while mixing in Pro Tools, so you're probably not going to use this, but if you did set up a headphone output, this would determine how the basic headphone output would come out. Head tracking, probably not using that, but you can turn it on if you've got an OSC tread tracker or some other head tracker. Output limiting, this is probably the one debatable thing. With it on, uh, at most, the renderer's terribly ugly uh, limiting limiter is present in the, that thing keeps popping up, I'm going to close it here. The terrible sounding limiter is on, and you may not want to hear it, you may want to hear it. I think you should hear it if you're a student and you um, want to know what it sounds like. It's probably a good idea to know, know what it sounds like, so leave it on. And outputs, of course, we want to hear speakers and headphones. Uh, we're not in headphone-only mode. That's what you use when you're mixing in a room that has no immersive speaker system. Uh, Re-renders on, although we're not going to be using loudness. You definitely want that on. It's going to let you monitor the loudness of the file. And I th that's a new feature. I'm not sure why you'd want to prevent the display sleep, but probably leave it on. It's probably a crashing issue. And this one's kind of interesting. The space bar is stop and start like it is in most DOS. But uh, you have an option of whether you want to return to the last position or be at the current position. So whatever you would like. Hit accept. And um, you you have two modes here to choose from. You have input. And input is if, you say, we were using Pro Tools as the playback device and we were sending all of our objects over via the Dolby Audio Bridge, they would come in here and we would play through this. Master is when you open up a file, which of course is what we want to do in this situation. So you go file, open master file, and I need to go and get that master file I just created. Um, my hard drive's a little, oh, I don't know, messy, I suppose. So we're, I just was in come and get your stuff, and I just did bounce files, and I did uh, this one right there, come and get yourself number two at 2.32 p.m., four minutes ago. And I'm going to open that up. And now it's loaded that file. So in master mode, I am playing come and get your stuff. If I go to input mode, of course, I'm going back to Pro Tools uh, if you were using it in external renderer mode. So this should press play at this point if I hit space bar. And you probably hear a little bit of leakage to the microphone, but it worked just fine. And you can see here, this bar right here is actually how we fast forward and rewind. You can skip to the end or click back to the beginning, or that sort of thing. Uh, you do have a little transport here. You've got play and pause. That's what the space bar is doing. Stop will bring you back to zero. So that's kind of cool. So that's your kind of return to zero if you're off. Uh, if you were using this in to record a mix from an, an external renderer configuration, if you were in input mode and you wanted to record a mix, it's actually a little bit more complicated. You have to type in empty record times and you have to lock up via timecode. If you lock it up via timecode, do note that it takes the transport back to zero, which is kind of interesting because if you exit that mode and you press play, you're going to have to wait potentially hours before your audio file plays, depending on what time code you had on your original file. It's just playing from zero, zero, zero. Hitting, a, a double hitting the stop button will take you to the appropriate location. And this particular empty, this particular song was recorded at two hours. So just know if you go in and out of time code, you probably want to double click the stop button uh, to return to zero. Um, you have loudness monitoring and I, not sure if it's more accurate than what we're using in Pro Tools, but I suspect it is. Uh, do note you can reset it here, you can pause it, and you can see what it's doing for the binaural as well as the Dolby Atmos. Um, so that's kind of cool and that's pretty important. Um, what else is worth noting? You might get these warnings down here, and one or more of these warnings in pink, I'm sorry, pink and orange, they're basically telling you that the preferences and the setup that the render has in its input mode is not agreeing with what the master file has. And this can be an issue when you're using the render in, ex uh, in external render mode, like running Pro Tools through it, and Pro Tools is not agreeing with the render, you might have a problem. But in this situation, it's really not an issue because you've already set your files and your, your binaural settings 
and your meta and you know, your down mix and all that sort of stuff you've set in Pro Tools. So you don't really care that it's not set appropriately in the renderer. If you want to clear these out, it's pretty simple. You go up here, you open the um, setting that has an issue. We have this input configuration issue here. You just say copy settings from master to input. And this will just set input to match master. And you hit accept and your warning goes away. So in this situation, we want the binaural render mode to copy from the master file as well. And all the settings that I used in my uh, file in, in Pro Tools will agree here. So the warnings go away. There is obviously much more to the external renderer than this and other videos from other people or perhaps from me can help you learn it. But this was just a quick way to print a file in Pro Tools, a quick video for that and to ADM and then open an ADM in the renderer and kind of get familiar with its usage. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on another video. Bye-bye.